Vancouver. Unfortunately, I have to reschedule. There's a lot that goes on to getting in and out of our countries, and until that's a little easier, I'm going to have to postpone the Vancouver and the Edmonton shows. Uh, But Thursday, March 3rd, I will be at Zany's for one night only, and Friday, March 4th, and Saturday, March 5th, I'll be in Lexington. Get all your tickets at ryansickler.com. The Honeydew with Ryan Sickler. Welcome back to the Honeydew, y'all. We're over here doing it in the Night Pan Studios. I'm Ryan Sickler, ryansickler.com, Ryan Sickler on all your social media. If you are watching the show, please hit the subscribe button. I can't tell you how much it means to us. It's nothing, if, especially if you're strapped and you're like, Ryan, you can hit me up so much. How can I help the show? I don't have any money. Hit subscribe. That's it. It means nothing to you and everything to us, all right? The Patreon show. I got to keep telling you about the Patreon show. It's one of my favorite things to do. I absolutely love my job. Uh, The honeydew with y'all, and I'm highlighting the lowlights with y'all, and y'all have not let me down, man. The stories continue to come in. It is a wild, wild show. If you subscribe, it's 5 bucks a month. If you're staying for a year, you get over a month free, and you're getting the honeydew a day early, ad-free at no additional cost. I haven't raised the price. We're keeping it at that. So go subscribe today. And if you or someone you know has that story that has to be heard, please submit it to honeydewpodcast at gmail.com. All right? You guys know what we do over here. We highlight the lowlights. I always say these are the stories behind the storytellers. I'm very excited to have this guest back on the honeydew. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome back. George Perez, everybody. Welcome back to the Honeydew, George. What's up, my boy? Thank you so much for having me back. To all the Sickler fans out there, thanks, man. Like, hey, I'm back. You are back. And before I say anything else, give me a little love, brother. Thank you. Congrats on being a paid regular at the comedy store. Thank you. Hey, we're made men, dog. Dude, we did it the same night to get. Not not only did we go in together, we did it the same night, and I brought you up. Yeah. And let me tell you, dude, you fucking slayed. I've been saying you had the best. There's no hands down the best oh, set of the fuck. night. Not just to the showcases. You had the best set of the night. Oh, dude. You shredded that. Thank line. you, brother. Hey, you know what? I, I want to. You're not lying because somebody came up to me and they're like, yo, Sickler was giving you props in the main room, in the green room, about your grandma getting deported joke. 100%. That shit really happened. I know. And that's what I'm saying was uh, the only <laughs> the, the police raided the house and the only illegal thing in there was your grandma. <laughs> Smoking weed while they're taking her ass out of there. I remember the line, the only grandma I ever lost. I was like, yeah. dude, that's a great joke. That's the shit I remember. Thank Sometimes you. I can't remember people's names or whatever, but like, dude, dude, that bit, that means more to me anyway. I don't give a fuck, fuck if yeah. you know if my name's Ryan or Brian. I don't give a shit. Anyway, congrats on being a paid regular at the World Famous Comedy Store. It's a big deal. Fun to go on with you. Thank you, brother. Uh, and check out George's last episode where uh, Salt Off Sundays was uh, coined. It was a great episode. Uh, but if you want to promote anything now, please do everything you want up top. Man. Yeah, uh, follow me on Instagram, Twitter. Uh, if you're married, you probably still have a Facebook with your wife. It's George P. Comedy. <laughs> uh, YouTube, George Perez Stories. Also, follow Fools Gone Wild. That's who I tour with. I tour with Fools Gone Wild and the Funk Freak. And uh, hey, I'm back. We're gonna go into detail about everything, and it's it's on. Yo, paid regulars, my boy. Paid regulars. Uh. Um. All right. So last time we were here, we talked about a lot of the shit you did that that landed you in prison, and we talked a uh, touched on prison. Uh, but I I was telling you before we record, I'm fascinated by prison. I, I love all the locked up shows. I love locked up abroad. What do you think of those shows? I know I know it's a little bit hokey and shit like that, uh-huh. but but I also can't believe there was a person that was convinced to do the shit these people have done. I know. You know, I'm watching this guy over in like fucking Brazil and I'm like, You're about to put two pounds of heroin up your asshole. You know, I'm I know I'm not even part of it and I'm getting anxiety like his motherfucker's crazy. Yeah. So I, as a person, my whole goal is to never, I don't even want to do jail, never go to prison. Pr- mm-hmm. Jail and prison are different fucking neighborhoods. Yeah, they're, they're way too different because yeah. when you're in jail, you're, how can I say it, governed or you're, the people in charge of you are sheriffs and they know you're not going to be there too long. 
Now, when you're in prison, they're correctional officers. Yeah, you're detained in jail. Yeah. You're living in yes. prison. Oh, yeah. Yes. It's two different shit. Like, when you're in the county, your clothes, all that crap, it's not going to go with you. When you go to prison, it's a whole new thing. So I was saying to you, like, I want to talk more about this lifestyle because there are people who want to go to prison. You were like, I know those fools. I'm like, yeah, there are yeah. people whose sole purpose in their life is like, I want to go live in that institution. Yeah, they play Monopoly and they get the get out of jail card and they burn it. Get this shit out of here. Have you seen guys literally that could get out and just or went right back? Is that what you mean? They get out and they go right back in? Yeah, it's 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 a whole different system. I mean, it's like it's kind of like the army, bro. That's like, what I'm saying. It's an institution yeah. for sure. And then plus, all right, so talk to me. Walk us through the first day you're going prison? to prison, oh. not jail. Prison. You ready for this shit? Yeah, day one. In I won't prison. forget it, bro. Because I don't remember if you told us on no, the last I did episode. Not. Okay. Uh Christmas Eve. <laughs> Already. <laughs> Christmas Eve is how it's dark. And I'm fucking I shaved the night before because I know my family's gonna come visit me. It's Friday. Right, what did they get you for? They got me for uh this last one was <laughs> uh assault. Aggravated assault, street terrorism, gang enhancements, and a GBI, great bodily injury. Okay, what? first of all, <laughs> what is a uh, street terrorism? Street terrorism is, uh, in that era, if you were considered a gang member and you were with more than two, three people. They made up a term. To yeah, hell you. yeah. yeah. I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> I look Indian, but I'm not. He's a terrorist? <laughs> no, yeah. no, he's a street terrorist. Yeah, okay. street terror. Okay. And this happened at the basketball court. So, yeah, two different shit. But, uh, yeah, they got me for that. And then the GBI yeah, is a great is bodily injury. And what did you do to that person? Uh, can you say? I know yeah, there's some I could shit say you it. can't no, talk No, I could about. say this because it's already done. So I broke his eye socket right here. He had to have, like, a plate. And I guess it's connected to, like, your breathing passages so that his fool pumped it up. He showed up to fucking court like Darth Vader. <laughs> when, remember when they found him? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, one Took leg. That. Yeah, and they were like, yeah. and then that fool got mad because his kids. Were... Yeah, and I was tri even I was like, fuck, man. <laughs> like you were breathing when I left. <laughs> but hey, I beat him up so bad, I told myself, get in the fucking car. <laughs> You're like, I got. And a lot of people don't know this, but the real reason I was defending, defending, is my son was on the fucking playground. This wasn't even gangster shit. There was two men playing basketball. <laughs> no. And this fool thought he could punk me. And I'm good in basketball. I was. I'm not good no more. I can't play. But I was scoring on him, clowning him. And, you know, this is be right before I become a comedian. But I still have those comedic, like, burns. Like, you, you know how it is, yeah. dude. When you're a man and, and you're getting burned by another man. and Yeah. And I just had to whip his ass. And, yeah. So I got locked up for all that shit. But. Going to prison? Fuck, man. Now, why is... Okay, I want to ask you this. What, was it a culmination of all the shit that you've done up to this point plus this to put you in prison? Or is this... If you had been clean, would this one offense be prison worthy? The only reason it was prison worthy is because of the GBI. Got it. Okay. That comes like... They should have... I should have done six years. Years? Yeah. Because a GBI is a three-year enhancement. Like, yo, you fucked it. Like, enhancement. I yeah. love that that's the it, word. <laughs> you know, that fucking Giselle, yeah. Giseline, who? I don't even know her for, name. For, for who, though? Huh? <laughs> that's an enhancement for yeah. who? For, not for the system. Yeah, and I was yeah, like, the money, more money. The, of course, keep the bed full, yes. And, uh, yeah, man. I was in the county, because you got to go to county for your trial. I fought this shit. And then, you boom. fighting a lot, bro. <laughs> That's what got you there in the first place. The bro. only one I lost. <laughs> it's the only one I lost. So before this, though, I mean, I, I had great parents, bro. It's a lot of people say it's parents. I had great fucking parents, man. My mom used to look for me at night with knives and shit. Even my friends were like, yo, your mom's looking for you, dog. The gangbangers are saying that. They're like, yo, your mom's looking for you with a bat and a knife. And I was like, fuck. I had to sneak into my own house and be like, I was in the room the whole time. What are you talking about? <coughs> so uh, we're going to go now to my first day in prison. It's Friday. I won't forget it. It's like fucking two in the morning. And the cop's like, Perez, you're catching the chain. Catching the chain means is 
you're going to go upstate to Wasco prison and it's showtime dog. And they, and they're just like, look, don't fucking bring underwear. Just fucking wear your jumpsuit, fucking sandals. And that's it. You're not none of this. You're, you're, and I was like, all right, whatever. And you're allowed to take, keep your, the letters and pictures that your family, you know, I was writing my family letters. They're writing me. I got to keep all that. And what, Hey, damn, if I'm having like a weird flashback, it's like a weird train ride. In, and everyone's you're on a train. No, I mean a bus. Okay. It felt like a train though. Cause the bus is old and you're all I've seen that bus on the highway. Yeah. <laughs> I've seen it. And you're like chained, bro. To what? The seat? No, to each other. So it's called the catching the chain. So like I'm handcuffed. My hands and feet are handcuffed. Okay. The guy next to me is handcuffed, and there's a fucking chain going through all of us. Every single oh, I see. Kind of like so if one, one goes, you all <laughs> yeah, gotta got, go. Yeah. <laughs> God, Remember God. Marshall yeah, and yeah, Har- yeah. Harrison Ford and shit like that. <laughs> it was like that. And, got it. And you know, and uh, is it two per seat? Is that yeah, the way? It's and two per seat. And this thing snakes through all of you. Yeah, and it's already race separated right now. You're like they already know. Like they got the blacks over there, they got the whites over here, and they got the others over here. The got, others, yeah. The, you know, other. You <laughs> yeah, know what others right. are? Uh. Uh-uh. So they have a group called Others, where they don't associate their politics with no one. They're just in their own lane doing shit. Because like, how in the fuck are you gonna be Mexican if you're from Russia? There's like mm-hmm. so that's where it breaks off. So we get to Wasco. That's probably what twenty degrees. I'm fucking freezing, bro. We're outside, and they're like, "Hey, this is it. You're no longer our property. You belong to the state." And we walk into a are building. You fucking, are you scared? I'm fucking scared as fuck. But in my okay. face, I'm just like, "Sure, bring yeah. this shit." <laughs> Bring this, this is what shit. I want to talk about. Yeah, because I watched some shit today where a wo- it was a woman's prison. She walked in. You could see the fear on this lady's face, and I was like, "They're gonna kick your ass." Yeah, but you know, you also have this thing where you know some people in there at the yeah. time, right? I mean, I- so th- I know that's a little comforting, but I couldn't imagine going in and being like, I don't know anybody in there that I could trust or even ask questions. Mm. So it's on your face. I'm hard, but inside you're like, I'm fucking. Oh my god! All that shit got stripped from me. Because when I walked in, I thought it was going to be like fucking uh, Shawshank Redemption where y'all walk in and they're all laughing at you and shit. No, you walk into a building and there's women walking. There's women in there doing the reception and they're like, get naked right now. And I was like, what the fuck? They're like, get naked. And then now there's 300 naked motherfuckers. And they're like, all right, boom. Check. They checked all my tattoos because they're, they're, they're profiling you where they're going to send you. They're like, all right, where can I send this for? Oh, oh, yo. Oh. And you know me, everyone says, I've never been a gang member or nothing. They're like, what's that tattoo? That tattoo. Then they go to this chart and they're like, okay, we know who you are. We know where you're going. And they, boom. As soon as I get up there, the lady was just like, what's your name? Boom. She looked it up. There's a fucking fight, bro. What do you mean? So while you're standing there talking to this lady, a fight breaks out. Yeah. And it didn't even break out in the building. It broke out on the yard. I haven't even been to prison yet. Like you're in the reception of it. And they, they had to bring this, this white boy, man. Oh man. Oh man. It was like swole ass white boy got brought in. His face was like completely just red. All, And I was just like, all right, homie, it's going down. In my head, I was just like, hey, man, it's going down. All right, cool. And then that's when everyone just, they separated us because they didn't know if it was going to ricochet in there with us because, you know, the whites seen their homeboy fucked up and they were like, what happened? And he's just like, he was just, they, they, they put him in a cage separate. I don't know what was going on. He owed money, what the fuck it was. But that was my first experience of like, hey, dog, they kill. Like, they kill here. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then, <laughs> yeah, I know exactly what the fuck. That's what I'm scared of. Yeah. So for any, I, I've watched some shit. I don't mean to interrupt. But no, I've you're watched good. Some shit where, and I've talked about this before, where I learned like whites here, blacks here, uh, Mexicans here, and like if you, this is the end, literally the end of the bunk bed. This guy was standing over here, but facing him doing shit, but his feet were in the Mexican side. It's over. And they kept telling him. Yo, so they finally went to the leader of the white the whites and was like, if your boy does this shit again, we're taking him out. And he was new. So they went to him and said, look, we don't know you. We don't give a fuck about you. Yeah. This is your last warning. 
if you go over there, you're not starting trouble for us. We're letting them yeah. fuck you up. And well, then he, he got it right away, you know? Yeah, see, what should have happened, and I'm not trying to tell any race how to do it, but if that was in my situation, I would have went up to the guy and be like, hey, homie, you're new, huh? Hey, check it out, man. You're one of us now. You represent us. So let me give you a little bit of sclecha. Yeah. Sclecha means schooling. But see, the Mexicans did that. They were cool about it at yeah. first. And that's why they were upset, like, homeboy keeps doing it. Yeah. We told him once, mm -hmm. that's it in prison. One yeah. fucking time. Yeah, I'm scared. Of, I couldn't. I don't think I could go to sleep. But that's what I want to get to next. All right, so get oh, through today because I want to know about the first time. You don't you even want to do it. Mind. It's that's what I'm saying. like the I day, feel like I'm gonna stay awake until my body just collapses. Okay, so after oh. that, they give you a laundry bag because you're in reception. Wasco is a reception and a prison yard. Reception is they're gonna interview you and let you know, like, hey, this was a fucking psycho. We got to put him in a ward. Excuse me. Or they're like, you know what? This guy, he's like a gangster, but I can see it. It's just an evaluation. My points were too high. I was in there for a violent crime. So the point system is, I think it's one through 18. You're on a level one yard. That's where like when Tommy Chong got locked up, he was locked up in Fairfield. It's a level one yard. No real criminals as far as like abusive. Level two yard is the same shit, but you know, it's, but the three and the four, Ryan, it's fucking rocking. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Fuck that. It is. No, huh? it is, bro. <laughs> it's like, and Wasco's a three and a four yard. Just that. Yeah. But so that, the whole place you're in is nothing but aggressive yeah. fucking convicts. Yeah. And they, every yard has a one yard because it's the workers and shit. Because you can't let these other guys work in the kitchen. They'll fucking kill each other. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Good point. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So Good you point. have to have one right. yarders yeah. there. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and, but, oh, dude. So they give me my laundry bag and shit. And I'm like, and one of the homies is like, I know people there, but they're not my friends. Right. They're like fools I used to gangbang with when I was younger. And they're like, what's up, homie? I thought you were doing comedy. What are you doing here? And I was like, I guess the jokes didn't work. Eh? <laughs> and then I was like, you know, some bullshit I did. So like, I, got, I got caught up in. And I knew I was only doing three years. So you like they ask you, how much time are you doing? And that's where you got to be super respectful. So you got reduced from six to three? No, I only got three because I got a great lawyer. And oh, when, okay. when I went to court, the judge is like, you know what, man? You haven't been in trouble in 12 years, George. You're a father you're doing good so many people wrote letters for me and he was like i'm just gonna give you three years and i was like oh shit Dang. isn't it crazy that you're thanking somebody for three yeah. years of prison? i wrote him i wrote yeah. him i was in prison his name was judge wapner Nah. -uh. yeah he was in newport not the people's court <laughs> yeah that's what everyone was like no i'm not making this shit up <laughs> Judge Wapner's the OG people score, <laughs> I didn't man. even think of that shit. I didn't even think of was that. Was it him? He was a retired judge? No, this guy was. You know, I don't ever judge nobody for being racist. This guy had no racist bone in him. I could feel it. He you was can't fair. Judge, judge, yeah. Yeah, like he was like, he was just, he wrote me back too. He was just like, you know what? I hope you do good in your life. I took a chance on you, guy. And I was like, I'm not, hey, I, I got your back. I got. He wrote me back, bro. I wrote him. He's like, you gotta invite him to if he's still alive. Bring him out to the comedy store, man. <laughs> yeah, for you real. won't believe. Oh, uh, I got. You're, you're, I love how you always. I could. Go, I've. I seen him later when I went to my brother's court. But anyways, so you get your laundry bag, and now they're taking you to your fucking prison cell. Once <laughs> the gate opens, there's signs on the wall that say "No warning shots." <laughs> Oh God, oh, everything, I'm scared of everything. <laughs> yeah. And there's these guys in towers with fucking AR-15s. Ready. Just, I, if if you put your foot on the fence, they have a right to shoot you. And that's called an escape now. One foot. I see, that's considered an escape. One Even if you're tying that shoe or something. Yeah, like I, I, I would look at the fence and be like, it's the first time a Mexican seen a fence and I was like, nah. <laughs> <laughs> nah. I ain't climbing this one. <laughs> nah. I'm good, eh? I'm good. So I get to the 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 craziest yards in Wasco are D4 and D5. D5 is now the hole, the shoe program. Or I was in D4. So what does that mean? D4 is 23-hour lockdown. 
All because of this aggressive charge? No. It's, enhancement? It's I mean, just how it is. That's is that just, how it starts or that's just how prison goes? That's It's a reception. So they know like, hey, if we let these motherfuckers out, shit's going to crack. Okay. We can't let, we, we, we didn't even get yard. Like it was just. One hour a day. One hour in the, and, and check this out. All my enemies live under me. Under me. On the floor below you? Yeah, right there. And uh, there, and in, there's a van, and they're talking shit. Fuck you, motherfuckers! I can't wait. And the way me and my people are, we don't say nothing. We avoid it. Like, yeah, okay, whatever. We put like little paper over the van. We have to hear them sometimes. And I get there. There's some fucking lame ass fool that was my cellie. I couldn't stand this fool. How many in a cell? That's what I want to ask. Okay, just oh, you and one dude, other you're, person. Dude, it's too dangerous. Yeah. And this guy was a weirdo, bro. Like weirdo. Like, he was trying to scare me, but that's beyond that. This is my first night. Like mental, like trying to get weird on you, like crazy? Yeah. Well, he was trying to scare me because he was hiding something. I figured it out later. I'm like, what the fuck? What's this fool, what's this fool hiding? And uh, I I told that fool, hey, dog, let's get down. When you're, when you're in prison and it's your own people, you have to be like, hey, look, I have a problem with you. So get your knife and I'll get mine and we'll just go at it. And then I'm cool. Or we can fight one on one. And I told him, hey, dog, we're going to have to get down. And then he pushed the button and left. Like you could tell the cops, hey, I'm in my fear and I want to get out of here. But the first night we're there. Yeah, I want to get to falling asleep eventually. I, get, I didn't get a chance to fall asleep. You clean your bunk. I'm talking, you better clean this shit like I, I if it's a garage sale oh, toy. God, I can't imagine. You know what I mean? So I got my soap. I got a rag. I fucking cleaned it all. I cleaned the floor. I cleaned everything. Put, put my mattress shit on. And then I'm, I'm, I'm kind of tripping because it's freezing. And all you have is a jumpsuit. So the, the homie's like, hey, put a t-shirt over your head. It's going to get cold. Wrap it on your head. Wear your jacket when you sleep. And I was like, I don't want to get this shit wrinkled, but I want to live. So I'm about to put my jacket on. And then out of nowhere, the fucking gooners come in. The gooners are like the SWAT team of probation, of correction officers. I guess the day before I was in prison, our people jump the cops oh man and the guy who started it is the guy's cell i came into that's why they kicked him out oh okay that's what he was hiding so i haven't even laid in my bed yet and they fucking go to my room rip all my sheets off to see if we had weapons <laughs> i just cleaned that <laughs> yeah and then when they search you they put you out on the yard and you have to go through a metal detector because sometimes people have metal in them and that was my first fucking night. And then I just, I, I, I remember like walking back and shit. And it's like, ah, oh, fuck, how old was I when I went in? I was 30. And uh, it's just a trip because there was fools there that were like monsters, bro. Like you could just, and one of them was like. Tell me about the baddest dude in D5. D4. Four. four. He was, uh. I'm not going to give up my homie, but there was an enemy in there that was fucking crazy. I mean, was there a guy in there that you just, everyone, everyone, regardless of race or whatever, was like, that fucking guy. He's the baddest motherfucker. Like, if you had to have prison against prison fights, who's the one dude that's repping this prison? I don't know. because There, was, there were some tough ones. Huh? Yeah, but there was one dude that came out on the news while we were watching it. He was from Bakersfield. He was from a gang called Country Cowboy Crips. And this fool went into the fucking club, looked at the camera, and was like, what's up, my boy? And just fucking boom, 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 shot that motherfucker, drank a beer, <laughs> and left. Damn. And it came out on the news while we were there because they housed him at Wasco where we were at. And he was a disrespectful-ass fool. And uh, I won't forget this fool. He's probably doing life. I mean, he has to be, but, like, yeah, he was a fucking... He was a piece of shit, dude. Like, uh, so if he's our enemy and any door opens, I have to fucking run out there. That's the way it works. Yeah. Tell him. I know you can't say everything, but no, but like, so say me and you are sellies. Mm -hmm. Your name's, uh, Rain. <laughs> <laughs> we'll call me Raul. I'll take Raul. That was my name in Spanish class, Raul. <laughs> the teacher said there is no Ryan in, yeah. in Spanish. She's like, I'm going to call you Raul. I go, what is that? She goes, Ralph. I was like, God damn it. I'll take it. 
And All right, so we're cellmates. By the way, you're locked up with one person for twenty. Those twenty three hours, you're with somebody. Yeah, that would drive me nuts. Well, it's a, it's a whole. It's kind of like we're at war, mm -hmm. so it's like, say me and you were locked up, it, it'd be cool because I'd be like, hey, so check this out. What's your schedule like, brother? When do you want to work out? When do you want to eat? So I give you the whole space. I'll lay on my bed for you for I four see. hours, and then you lay on your bed Got for it. me for four hours. That way I can read. When you're on your bed, you read a book. You write a letter yeah. to your loved ones. It's like a, it's a camaraderie. It's like, yo, homie, this is us. But that fool that I had first wasn't he wasn't with the program. So I had to like let him know, man. And uh yeah, bro. So that guy that was that killed that fool, he decided to piss on one of our doors. Cause they give you a day room and he pissed on one of our doors. And the next chance we had, we got that fool out of there. Just attacked him. Yeah. Damn, fool, you brought back some crazy memories. <laughs> you need more water? <laughs> Yeah, man. Uh, you know, it was a trip, though, too, Ryan. I seen childhood friends in there in that prison. Because after I was in D4, they moved me to A1. Now that's prison mainline life. Like where I was at, the cops are like, we're not going to deal with you guys. You're going to be in yourself for 23 hours. You're going to take an hour to fucking take a shower, say hi, do whatever you got to do, and you go back in. Now in this other place... Sell living, more people. Okay. Now, how long are you before you're moved into that area? It matters. It took me three months. Man, you were on lockdown 23 hours a day for three fucking months. Dude, I did 90 days in the shoe and that, with the hole. Is that the hole? Okay. The yeah, shoe. They I, call. I, 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 take, I wasn't in the shoe. I was in the hole. What's the difference? The shoe's a program. Like some oh. people, like my uh, one of my best friends, my brother Evans, he did 13 years in the shoe. God, I'm and, still thinking 90 days in the hole. Yeah. How much out of that are you? 24. What do you mean? I mean, how much, like, do you get out at all? No, Five minutes? Nothing? No, no. I mean, they they let you shower once a week in the normal shower. Week? Yeah. Well, you just got to shower in your cell. I mean, in the little, yeah, the little you cell. You like a bowl of water and, and cleaners, there, though. It's crazy because there's like five all other right, this cells. This is a 10 by 10 room. How big is the hole? Smaller than this, right? Uh... From this table to the wall. That's it. Uh, from yeah, right here. This is it. Just it. Nah, Holy maybe here. Shit, that's like a five by five. Yeah, and there's, six a, by there's six. a toilet there. There's your bed, and then there's just a door in your little area right there, and nothing. You don't. You don't have no extra food. You don't have none. Books. Of, uh, one book. Yeah. Anything to write with? No, probably. Pen. Damn, you can't no, yeah, pen, like yeah. that little ass pencil you get for like questionnaires at Whole Foods. Man, so what are you doing to to keep your crazy. mind sane? I'm fucking working out. Yeah, not jokes. Like, mm -hmm. <laughs> like thinking of any. You're allowed to get mail. I remember getting mail once. Oh, I'm gonna forget that letter for ninety me. days of darkness and solitude. Mm -hmm. And then like under, so the doors are kind of. So if this is the floor, this is the door. And then I just started going under the door. Hey, well, so who else is in here? <laughs> You're trying to get stage time. <laughs> <laughs> how y'all, how many y'all out there smoke? Yeah, we smoke. All right. That's my <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> oh, and my then, God. I ain't going to lie. I started telling jokes to those fools. I was just like, what's up, homie? Hey, like, I, I remember doing, I was like, hey, homie, it's hard doing comedy in prison. They're like, why? I'm like, everybody's so captive. <laughs> captive on and it. then one of the homies was like, yeah, my tooth hurts too. I go, no, not a cavity cap, fucking cover on captive. I've been recommending that everyone listen to the How to Buy a Home podcast. And so many of you have already listening and already on your way to buying a home. In fact, David has an incredible episode that just dropped last week where he interviewed this young guy who happens to be a Honeydew listener. All right, a year ago, he had no job, zero credit, and the bank denied his home loan. And then he heard about the How to Buy a Home podcast 
because of the honeydew, and he contacted David. Now he's closed on a $200,000 three-bedroom home with a two-car garage and a huge basement on a half acre. I know buying a home in today's market feels impossible, but it's not. You've got to check out the How to Buy a Home podcast. If you haven't started listening yet, David can help you too. It's an incredible resource for anyone who's interested in buying a home, whether that's in the next month, next year, or in five years. And who knows? 2022 could be the year that you finally own your own place. Host David Sedoni has been helping first-time buyers like us for years. I'm telling you, if you're thinking about buying a home next month, next year, in five years, listen to the How to Buy a Home podcast today. David can help find how to buy a home wherever you listen to podcasts. Whether it's saving more and spending less, getting organized, or losing weight, there's a lot of worthwhile goals to set for yourself this year. At the top of my list is learning a new language with Babbel, the language learning app that sold more than 10 million subscriptions. I told you all already before they even came to me, I was already using Babbel because I believe in Babbel. been learning my Spanish, brushing up on it, and not only is learning a new language a fun and engaging new hobby, you can use it while traveling. The whole Babbel process is addictively fun, fast and easy. Babbel teaches bite-sized language lessons for the real world use, okay? So when I take my lessons, I'll do my lesson. Um, they'll, they'll speak it to me in a, a male and a female voice. Then you have to write it back. So you're constantly redoing it and, you know, um, repeating steps and hearing it in different ways, and it really it really helps. Babbel's 15-minute lessons make it the perfect way to learn a new language on the go. Other language learning apps use AI for their lesson plans, but Babbel lessons were created by over 100 language experts. Their teaching method has been scientifically proven to be effective. With Babbel, you can choose from 14 different languages, including Spanish, French, Italian, and German. Plus, Babbel's speech recognition technology helps you to improve your pronunciation and your accent. There are so many ways to learn with Babbel. In addition to lessons, you can access podcasts, games, video stories, and even live classes. Plus, it comes with a 20-day money-back guarantee. Start your new language learning journey today with Babbel. Right now, when you purchase a three-month Babbel subscription, you'll get an additional three months for free. That's six months for the price of three. Just go to Babbel.com and use promo code Honeydew. That's B-A-B-B-E-L.com, code Honeydew. Babbel, language for life. Now, let's get back to the do. Yeah, man, that was the whole. That shit what, sucked. Um, what did you learn about yourself in those 90 fucking days? I should... That's a great question. I, I learned that uh, patience is everything. Uh, light is beautiful. Yeah. People are beautiful. Uh, it, uh, no, nah, man, like it, it, it's all kinds of shit. I was in the hole because I was in a riot and the riot had to happen. It had to happen. And I'm not one of those guys that's like, oh, I was there. No, I I, I was like, I'm going to get. It doesn't matter what kind of guy you are. When you're in prison, you are now in a brand new place. And it, I, I watched this documentary on HBO. It pissed me off a little bit because um, there was this, it was like a white nerdy kid. And he wrote a bunch of bad checks. But they put him in a violent prison, maximum security, mm -hmm. because of the amount. Yeah, And the lawyer kept saying, you can't throw this kid in with the killers and shit. They're going to fucking kill him. And that's exactly, they didn't kill him. What they did is made him help. So one dude was stabbing another dude, and they made him hold the guy's legs. He was in there for bad checks. Now he's now he's in for life for murder in yeah. prison. And they just made this guy hold the dude's legs while he and again it's it was violent. They had the video of it and you're just it's like the dude stabbed him like sixty times or something. But but again, they're reminding you like this is a guy who raped and killed people that's dying. So mm -hmm. but then he joins a band in prison. I'm like, we I'm at the music center. We can't get instruments for these kids. <laughs> these people stealing them out of here during the riots. <laughs> This motherfucker's playing the bass guitar in prison. Get the fuck out of here, man. There's only know. one guitar in there. <laughs> had three strings and shit. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, he was this nerdy kid that did, and that's what I'm saying. You could end up in there. You could easily end up in there. That's why I'm so, I don't ever want to. I'm scared of it. And I tell so you, the riot had to happen because you're in prison, and if that's what's going to happen, then you're either with it or you're dead. Well, yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, you're not dead. There's a there's gonna be a price to pay. You're not, you know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, but I was kind of as stupid as it sounds, Ryan. I was with it. I was still. Uh, I'm 30 years old, and I was like, 
man, I'm I'm fucking shot off Sundays. Under, I was just like, you know what? Fuck this shit. I, I need to let these fools know what's up. So what happens in a riot? All hell. All hell. And are they, they're not firing in on you guys or anything like that? Was, or you're getting as much as you can before they lock you all down? The riot I did was in the county. Okay. And it was all bad. It was just us versus everybody. Cause we everybody. Were, everybody. We were sick of what the fuck we were getting treated in there. And we're like, we're not going to have this shit no more. So we all woke up early as fuck. And what do you do? You just fucking get up. And How hit. many of you guys? Uh, there was maybe, let me see. I would say there's about 150 in that dorm, total people. And there was probably... 80 Mexicans. So half of you guys against everybody else. Yeah. But everybody else was like, we're, we're helping you too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. You were like, oh, HD, honey, dude. No, that's down homie. <laughs> um, are you Mexican? I am today. <laughs> yeah. I am today. <laughs> and fuck, bro. So we lived. In these, uh, it's a big ass dorm, and they have like Fox Trot, Alpha, Beta, C, like places where you live. They house like fifteen to sixteen people. I was living in Fox Trot F. They found me in B. Is that far away? Like, oh uh, no, I wasn't even supposed to be where the for the tables were, and yeah, but it was kind of an honor because like. They came in, the cops came in with fucking uh, those- uh, Rubber bullets? Are they, what are they, gas? All the shields? No, worse. They Battering ram shit? Worse. Worse? What the fuck is it? They came in with like a pepper spray, but like size of fire extinguishers. Oh, I've seen those, the ones they use on the Capitol rioters and shit, yeah. And then they had paintball pellets that had mace in them. Oh, shit. And I had so many welts on me, and- I just remember though, like, so they, they when they come in, everyone stay where the fuck you are. You have, they have to investigate, and then they're like, "What the hell are you doing over here?" I was like, "You know, you make up an excuse, dude." I woke up, people were fighting. I ran, I ran, and they're like, <laughs> "Okay," I'm, they're like, "Why do you have all these welts on you?" I was like, "You guys shot me," like, and they're like, "Why are your hands out?" Uh, this is from that riot. Damn. Like, yeah, like it was going down, bro. It was going down, and. They took me away, and people are just like, get down, shotgun, get down, homie. And I was like, why weren't you guys with me? Like, like, okay, I'll see y'all fools. I'll see y'all fools. I'll see you later. I'll see you later. And then, like, people who don't go, they're the ones that were like, oh, no, 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 I, I, got, I, I did my thing. So whatever. Yeah, bro. That was so the So what riot. do they do then? Do they have more time to your sentence for shit No, they like have that? to investigate, and then they sent me to the hole. I lost. They knew. They were like, no. Nah. And then they put you in a red jumpsuit. You do your 90 red, days. Huh? Yeah, because now you're a violent. Like, hey, this might, he, he'll do some shit. And yeah, bro. But being in the hall, I got away from everybody. I wrote all my family. And uh, it was kind of like, hey, homie, you know what's going to happen every time. And I mean, I'm with the business, bro. If there's a riot, I'm, I'm going. But there was no need to be more aggressive than I had to be. After that, no. now, that time in solitude, did you envision yourself back on stage? Did you were you saying to yourself, when I'm out of here, I'm going to go do comedy, do the right thing? Or were you worried you'd be back there? What were you thinking? None of that. Nothing. No, I was just more like, fuck, I let my kids down. They were going to come visit me. Now you're, you're uh, denied oh, all that shit. shit. Three months now, you don't even get to see your kids. Yeah. Wow. And like. It sucked, man, because my son was in sixth grade at that time, and I have custody of him. And we were just like, he'd always write, and he was just like, what happened? And I was like, I'll see you at visiting. <laughs> like, I can't explain this shit through a letter. And I just remember seeing him. He was just like, hey, man, I don't have a mom. All I have is you. What are you going to do? And I was like, all right, I'll be home. I'll be home. Don't trip. Be and then... Yeah, man. You know, your friends and your family can't check you, but your kids can. You know what I mean by that. And you just do a certain thing. And from there, on, 
on. I do know what you mean by that. Yeah, I was like, you know what, George? There's no more reason to be hard. Motherfuckers know what's up. It doesn't up. hit like the way it does when you're kids. <laughs> yeah. It just like, doesn't. Yeah. You know? It's crazy. Like, my son to this day still lives with me. And he's always like, hey, remember you, you drew this for me in prison? I was like, you kept all this wow. shit? And he's like, dad, I loved it. And I go, I, ain't, I'm, I go, I'm not going to lie. I didn't draw that for I paid for <laughs> <laughs> I paid some raisinets for this. <laughs> for an artist. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, it's a trip, though, as I was locked up with some crazy gangster named Rascal. He's from La Marada. That's La Marada. For the yeah, way. I got it. I got it. I've been out here long enough. I can order a Taco Bell. <laughs> and he was a tattoo artist and a hardcore gangster. I was going to ask you, do you have any, how many prison tats? All of All them? All of them, yeah. except for- I think I might have asked you that last yeah, time. Yeah, this one is my mom's name. She passed away. I got her in a rose. And yeah, that's it. And oh, no, but Rascal did these when he got out. Like his, his life, he's doing great. He owns his own tattoo shop okay. now. Like, hey, bro, it's a it's a trip when you're locked up with someone, and then you see them rehabilitated and get out and do it and huh? do it. Yeah. Like, did I tell you about the time I got locked up at the Dodger game? I, I mean, no, I don't think so. <laughs> you said it to me before we got on, and I was like, shut up and don't say another word. <laughs> Why would you do at the Dodger game? So we were in those cheap ass seats, the ones like where you can see the fucking does and shit. Yeah, yeah. When and, you can't tell if it's a foul ball or a home run yeah. for a minute. Yeah, you're like, hang on. All right, all right. All right. Like, you know, you dare catch it. You're like, <laughs> <Yeah>. no. <"Nah." laughs> you yeah. just wait to get hit by the ball. And uh, we were drunk and shit, and we were throwing shit on the field. And we were just being dumbasses. We were the girls, and the girls we were with are pushing people. And, uh, yeah, they, they have a jail in Dodger Stadium. They got, I think, in all stadiums. But, wait, you got, you. so you were, being, you were drunk and throwing shit on the field. What inning? Uh, I think it was the fifth or the sixth. I got, <laughs> I got, I got out ninth in. <laughs> nah. Wait, so they take you down to the jail and you get out? Yeah, and they realized that like we really weren't doing shit. They were containing us, and like I'm not on parole. I'm not. It's fucking bullshit. Like I wasn't even thinking about it. Like how stupid were you to let these fools lock you up? Like, hey, dog, you're not even a cop. Like, the hot dog fools locked us up. Nah, <laughs> like <laughs> not some hot dog vendor holding some gangster down. <laughs> That's how fucking drunk we that were. That motherfucker must have loved his job. Because I'll tell you what, for that minimum wage, I ain't holding shit. The hot dog guy got you. <laughs> yeah, man, prison. It it, it 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 sucks right now too, Ryan. Uh, the system's bad, bro. Like on a level two and one yard, those yards that were like for people to go home, mm -hmm. they're no good no more. When I mean no good is they have the snitches. They're called SNY yards. What's that? Special need yards. Okay. Like you got snitches, molesters, fucking people that are- Chomos and all yeah, that shit People there. that have done a crime, if they put them with people like me, they'll be killed. So now they're like, well, if you want to go home, you have to stay on this yard, but then you're no good no more. So it's all bad. It's all bad, bro. Like, say you're doing 20 years and you're on your 18th year now. You're like, you know what, Ryan? Your points have dropped. Now you can get visits with your family and hug them and shit, but you're like, I can't go to that yard. I can't sleep with the molester. I can't have like yeah it's all bad man sh sh hey shout out to all the homies doing time stay safe fellas stay on that three yard and just do that hard time at the end because say you go to that level two yard now you got to beat that guy up so they'll take you off the yard and you just added eight months to your sentence i see yeah yeah if you were in prison you'd handle bro I, I, it's just your style listen i i believe I would hope where I was put, I could hold myself, hold my own. But you put me on those. With the, I'm I'm almost fifty. You put me in there with some twenty four year old fucking monster. Fuck it, <laughs> I'll take the ass whooping. I'll yeah, take it. Yeah. But I ain't gonna do nothing. Yeah. You know, I might get his eye. I'll go for an eye, something. Yeah. But Not, also, I wouldn't start any shit. I'm yeah. I'm that way in life. I mind my own business. 
I don't want to look over here and even see what you're doing. I hear horror stories about people walking by and looking in. Now you saw what they were doing. Like, get your ass in here. You're doing this heroin too, because if you don't, you're going to tell on us, and we're going to have to fucking kill you. Now you're doing whatever in that cell. I hear all kinds of stories. Yeah, well, you don't have to do the heroin, but it's yeah, more but it's like gonna, if we get like caught, you said, there's going to be a price to pay. Yeah, yes. yeah. Yeah, that, that, oh, fuck, I feel bad. I don't even know if I've ever said this shit. You always bring this shit out of me, dude. You, you'd be, <laughs> <laughs> you'd be like the best guy for 48. You're like, all right, I need to know everything, right? Now. <laughs> so I was at this prison, man, and there was this white guy that was, oh, this poor guy. He was an older man, like 64. His name was Wesley. He was from Compton. Originally, like the OGs. Yeah, I was going to say, he must be 64, well, way he's back. He's probably 74, oh, okay. 76 now. He was in there for attempted murder. Got a divorce, started drinking. He's 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 a not a puny, but he's a little guy. And then somebody made fun of him afterwards, and they beat him up. They pissed on him. They took his money. And so he broke a bottle, went in there and stabbed that motherfucker. Damn. Yeah, and now he's staying. I was in a dormitory my last year because my points dropped. Is that your own cell? Or no, you're still I, sharing. No, now point? I'm living in a barracks with a hundred inmates, and it's just open. Open. Oh, okay. Like you know, in the Navy, right? Like, yep. And it's like that, and Got it. it rock and rolls. And uh, this fool, he was. I'm allowed to have a white or a Mexican fool sleep under me. If not, I'm not sleeping there and shit's going to happen. It's what it is. It's what it is. It's the politics. And so one night I had my cell phone and I was, I was, it was my fault, bro. I shouldn't have been as loud as I was because he had to go to work. He was, uh, he worked for the ex, for the dental ex, they have dentists in prison. Okay. And he was the x-ray guy that went. Yeah. And he had juice and I didn't, I could have used them, but I was like, this poor old white man. And then uh, one night he wakes up. In front of everybody, dog. There's like all of us right there. All of us. And he's like, hey, shotgun. I'm like, good morning. He's like, fucking, what do you mean good fucking morning? You fucking kept me up all fucking night, all this bullshit. And I just looked at this fool. And everybody's looking at me like, oh, shit. Someone just called out shotgun. He was sitting on the bottom bunk, putting his fucking shoe on, talking shit to me. And I just fucking jumped off my bunk. I fucking kicked him in the motherfucking face. <laughs> <laughs> That's why. This is why I never want to go to prison. Because he had to say something and you had to do something. That's what I'm saying. I don't even want to be in prison yet. And then, I, I get the fucking mindset. Yeah. I don't want to be there. And I remember just going, you say one more word, dog. I'm not going to stop. And then all the whites were like, fuck, we have to back up our homie. And all the Mexicans were like, jump. And then fucking, I was like, I don't have the power, but I was just like, hey, homie, it was a misunderstanding. You know, if you guys want to punish me, I'm down. And the homie's like, no one's punishing you. This motherfucker disrespected you, and you did what you had to do. And then, like, it was weird, fool, because I had to sleep with this fool later. <laughs> did, he, did, he, hey, did he go fix his own teeth? <laughs> <laughs> He's in there himself doing his shit. X raying his own shit. Like, ah, that's all. <laughs> you are a savage. <laughs> that's the guy I'd be in prison saying nah. shit like that, and I get beat in my sleep for talking shit. This is the fucked up part. It's so, all like, he didn't even go to eat. He was embarrassed. He thought his people were going to punish him because he didn't fight back or yeah, whatever. And I just I went up to the white rep. I said, "Hey, homie, it was a misunderstanding." <laughs> the rep. I love it. Yeah. Guy's got a little name tag. No, nah, he don't have a name tag. I know. Yeah, but I was just I told that for hey, homie, like <laughs> I apologize. I shouldn't have to apologize, but this old man's going home in a year. I don't think he's ever had to deal with someone like me. So I apologize, but if anything else, let me know. And he's like, "No, no, no, no." He's like, "We're going to tax him." I said, "That's what I don't want you guys to do." You know, What's that, tax him, you said? They're going to beat his ass. Oh, that's a tax. Okay, yeah. Tax that ass. Yeah, okay. and I was like, <laughs> okay. and, I don't, and I, don't, I, I don't have no power. And I was just like, hey, dog. And he's 68. Yeah. And a bunch of young, strong motherfuckers yeah. are going to roll on us. And yeah. people are already been killed at that prison I was at for getting taxed. Because you fight in the restroom and it's all tile. And if you fall Crack back, head, it's yeah. a wrap. So I, I remember, like, I was working the yard crew. 
And I just remember like, fuck man, I feel like a dick. Like I went to breakfast and people were like, oh shit. And you know, the whole prison knew, oh shit, George kicked, and they made shit up. Oh, George kicked some white boy in the face. He did a backflip, rolled in someone else's bed, pretending he was yeah, asleep. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and like, <laughs> hey bro, fucking gossip all day. I just remember coming back and I just go, hey homie, let me talk to you real quick. And he was just like, yeah, yeah. And his head down all scared. I go, hey dog. You don't have to be like that, but you put me in a position. Now, I apologize to you, but that's it. Here's a fucking cigarette. If you want to. Here's we can... two tickets to the comedy store. <laughs> <laughs> I promise you they're going to be good someday. <laughs> you could park here by spot. <laughs> I I, I want to find this fool because he was cool, man. Yeah, that's like my whole like. Oh. Now let me ask you. I, I like it. So you got a heart in there. Yeah, yeah. it hurts, bro. It hurts because like I still had to do. I still did four to five months of this fool sleeping under me, and he didn't talk to me ever after that. He was just like. I bet he didn't say shit to you. <laughs> That's the lesson. He learned. <laughs> what? Um, all right. So here's what would have happened if you didn't do anything to him. Uh, now, I didn't do anything to him. Yep. If he talked shit like that. I probably would have got stabbed. By your own. Yeah. For not sticking up. Straight up. No, it, it would have been like this. Like, if the big homie would have been like, hey, come here real quick. Let's go to the baño. What the fuck going on? Right, right there. All right, you need to get taken care of, or you need to go handle that right now, and you're still going to get taken care of. Because you didn't do it, and I had to tell you. Yeah. Yeah. But I was never that guy. There was a guy in there, though, that fucking was Don King. What do you mean? He was- Like a promoter? Oh, he was He was just like, hey, check this out, Don. Somebody was talking bad about you. <laughs> Don King. <laughs> I heard it. And he was willing to put himself on the line. Like, hey, we'll go over there. And I was like, who's talking shit on me? He goes, that fool. He goes, you want to fight him? I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he goes, all right. He goes, only, I'm the only one allowed in there. And we were fighting the restroom. And uh, nobody beat his ass for this? Nah, he was like, this fool was like 6'4", 230. Oh, okay. Like, he's already been in prison for 16 years. And like, no homo. He was beautiful, man. He was telling me stories that he was locked up since he was like 12. So he's never seen the sun. He doesn't have no sugar in him, no salt. So he's healthy. He's fuck yeah. yeah. <laughs> and his whole body. I've it, been waiting for the silver line in here from about <laughs> prison. And there it is. Yeah. His whole body was women doing sexual shit. His tattoos? Yeah. And I'd just be like, and, and I remember he'd always be like, he goes, yeah, homie, fuck it. Only person I love is my mom. He ain't fuck that shit. My mom's been visiting me since I was 10. This fool told me he used to fuck ham when he was little and, <laughs> in juvenile hall. The ham hawk? <laughs> yeah. He was ah. like, he's like, you just got to cut a hole, put butter in there, eh? <sighs> he's putting butter in. And then the funniest shit, he goes, yeah, he goes, I like, ham. He goes, I like fat bitches. When I get out, I hug with the fat bitch because they smell like those hams. <laughs> this dude is fucked up. Yeah. Did I even tell you about the time that I seen a prison guard that I was locked up with at a fucking show that I was at? I don't know. I don't remember it. Downey doing an underground yeah. comedy show. One of the prison guards was there. He remember you? He just goes, "Hey, you're George Perez." I said, "Yeah." And he goes, "You remember me?" And I was like, "Nah, you like a fan or something?" And he just went like. Show me his gun. He goes, hey, man, I have to let you know that, like, you were in my prison. I, I have to leave, dog, but I'm just letting you know that I'm strapped. And I was like, homie, I go up next. <laughs> oh, he <laughs> didn't know you were a comic? Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I'm going on stage Is that next. really what they have to do legally? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. So I don't think they have to tell you, but he was just more like, because he seen me there with a group of people. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, fuck, that must be a hard job. Also, to remember everybody, I feel like the turnover is pretty motherfucking high. In there. Yeah, no, you'll remember, bro. You'll remember. So he was strapped in. There. Did he watch you? No, huh? no, he left. Yeah, because I probably told in his head. He goes, "Fuck, they know I'm a cop." I see. Yeah, you, that would blow his cover. Yeah, yeah. I, I think that's the hardest job ever, a cop. Imagine that you have to wear a camera to work. Yeah, and it records everything you do and say. I wouldn't. This is hard enough. This hour is hard enough to say <laughs> shit not to get canceled. Yeah. Yeah. I couldn't imagine that. Yeah. Fuck that. All right. So now you do three years. Mm -hmm. Did you do all three? 
Uh, since it was a violent crime, you have to do 85% of your time. So I did okay. three years and you no, know, two years and like nine months. All right. So talk to me about getting out. Like, what is it like that week leading up to getting out? They give you a, 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 a ducket. It's called the S ducket. Because when you're in prison, you have a card and that card lets you know where you're supposed to be. So between one o'clock and two o'clock, George is allowed to be by the cafeteria because he works there. He's allowed to go to the yard at this time because he doesn't have no work. So they give you an S ducket that's letting all the cops know, oh, you're going home in two weeks. Okay, cool. Yeah, go. go. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. and like, you don't have to go to work no more. Like, I don't have to work. Look, this is why. Because if you don't go to work, they'll fucking give you more time or like they'll give you this. Any fuck up is more yeah, time, it's, it's right? It's called a 115. It's like a, a, what's that shit called? Cops, a citation. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just remember, man, my. my my real close homie in those last months was some guy named Little Man, solid as fuck. He, he's, he just, he's doing it 18 years. He was locked up since he was 15 for murder. And he was just like, hey, dog, you're representing us. Like, when you go out there now, you don't have to be this gangster. Be you, but you don't have to be hitting fools up, blasting. Like, go out there, let the world know where you were funny. We have a sense of humor. Let them know that gangsters, homies, cholos, chicanos, like, we can, we're funny, dog. And I was kind of like, like, everybody was cheering for me, bro. It was kind of cool, man. But that fucking walk, I'll never forget that day I, yeah, I got released. Me. What you, do you do now? Do you you still, don't sleep. Are you, okay. Go back to the, my first question. The first night you finally did sleep, oh, yeah. were you by yourself because the dude was out of the cell, or did you have to sleep with this dude? I had to sleep with him for like two weeks. What until, is that like? It's weird, bro. Is it loud or is it quiet? It's no. quiet as it's a motherfucker. Quiet. There's a penalty for talking after. There is. Oh, yeah. It's, so how do people communicate? Is it quiet whisper? Is it notes back and forth? Like, how do you talk to your cellmate? There's no whispering at all. It, it'll they'll hear it, huh? Yeah. So you just pass a little letter under, mm -hmm. but there's really you're really not even trying to do that, right? You don't want to bring no attention to yourself. Are they walking by or are there cameras? There's everywhere? cameras and they're walking by in the cell. There's cameras no, too outside. Okay. Got it. And uh, yeah, I just there's no pillow. There's no pillow. I guess not. I mean, that is a luxury. <laughs> I guess, huh? Especially there because. Yeah, fuck, man. All right, so now the week you're going out, you can't sleep. You're so fucking excited. Are they letting visits happen during that week, or is it like now nah. you'll be home? I mean, visits are assigned to you through, like, you have a, a, a correction, a number they give you. Mine was F99587. And those last three numbers are, are like everyone gets a week in the month. So I had the third week of the month, and my shit already passed as I got released. I got released the day before Thanksgiving. It's all holiday-based, huh? Yeah. Christmas Eve and then the day before Thanksgiving. Yeah. All right, so what happens? Thanksgiving Eve, to me, honest <sighs> to God, it's a great night. Fuck yeah. It can be a great night. Damn, dude, you're making me like almost tear up right now. <sighs> Who picks you up? I'll, I'll get to that. Everyone's sad, dog. They don't want you to leave. Fools are like, where are you going, homie? It's, it's just, I got a year left, do it with me. And I'm like, I can't, dog. Like, I got to go. And I just remember, like, this is where you, people know who you are. Everything you said, what, are you going to be accountable? So I told everyone, hey, I had Jordans in there. I had Levi's, nice jacket, clean undershirts. So I go, hey, homie, I said... I went up to everybody. I said, look, here's that jacket I promised. Here's that watch. Here's it. I go, because when I leave here, I can get all this shit. You guys can't. Here's my radio. Here's my TV. I left everything. And people were like, get down, homie. Get down. And then I remember just having the bomb-ass dinner. I didn't sleep, bro. I was just chilling with my homeboy, little man. And we were just talking. And he's just like, hey, dog, like, you're, what are you going to do? And I was like, I don't know. I'm scared. Were you? Yeah. I was like, I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't, is that what you were scared about? Like, I didn't even know where I was going to live. The girl was like, hey, if you find a job within three days, I'll let you live with me. I was like, what? <laughs> three days. <laughs> 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 Do you feel me? Yeah. And uh, 
There's always rumors that people are like, hey, fools, some fools have beef on you. This is what I wanted to ask you. Is there truth to the people want to fucking trip you up and try to sweat you before you go out so they, they I've seen it you. happen to people. Yeah. That I is, seen it happen yeah. where fools are like, nah, homie, you owe money. You're not going nowhere. Oh, okay. And I was just like, I don't know no money. And that's when the guard's like, Perez, bunk, 32. And I was like, Phew. I ain't going to lie. I wanted to run because I didn't want to walk through that. And they were like, everyone's like, hey, come here. Give me a hug. Give me a hug. Give me a hug. Fuck yeah, homie. Hey, hey, here's my address. All right. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And then you have to walk. The whole prison, you have your little brown bag, f tore up ass clothes. I took whatever was worse because they have mail outs. Your family mails you clothes you can wear when you leave. And then I'm in a cell like this big. It's a wire. It's a wire. A, a cell with a chain fence. And they're like, hey, you're going to go home in two hours. There's a black guy in there. There's an Asian in there. There's a white guy in there. I'm pretty sure you guys ain't going to fight. It's like, what do you want to do? You want to be by yourself in the closet or you want to go in that cell? <laughs> I said, I'm cool. I'll go in the cell. I'm going home, you know? Put my clothes on and shit. Everyone was like, they gave you $200. <laughs> That's more than comedy clubs give you. <laughs> Ain't that some shit? You've been doing oh, nothing but shit. time here. <laughs> oh, and... Uh, you know, everything runs through your head, bro. My daughter was the most precious thing I wanted to see because, like, when I wasn't, my girlfriend was pregnant when I went to prison. So I didn't even get to see my daughter be born. Man, really? I met my daughter on my birthday on the first prison visit I ever had. Wow. How old was she at that time? Days, weeks? August. Six, seven months. Months? Okay. Yeah. Almost what was year. that like? It was crazy, dude. She, but it was, she was so. It, it, she was. Did they let you hold her? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can hold her in okay, prison. I didn't know that. Yeah, and uh, so uh, you're waiting, bro. You're just like, hey, dog. Like you guys said, I could leave. Why am I still in this? We waited for two hours, and then finally they were like, I, I remember talking to my my girlfriend the day before. She's like, hey, we're gonna be in the parking lot in this car, and like. They open a fucking fence, and they're like, all right, fool. It is like that, huh? That big slide yeah, fence. Oh. Yeah. And they're like, look, you cannot hang out in this fucking parking lot. You cannot be, because there's there's houses by my prison. Like, the, there's like, it's it's society, civilians. Yeah. There's a park across the street. That's crazy. Yeah, but everybody knows when you escape, you don't kick it. You go. Yeah. So they ain't scared. And, uh, oh. I just remember like, all right, cool, man. And then they open the next gate and they're like, hey, find your family and get the fuck out of here or get in our van. We'll take you to the Greyhound and you can go somewhere. And I don't know where my, my girlfriend's like, hey, hey. Oh, dog, it's crazy. Like you get in the car and shit, of course you cry and shit. You know, I'm all crying and shit. Oh my God, you're home, you're free. And I was like, yeah, yeah. You know, I go, please, can we leave? <laughs> can we leave? Is your daughter there too? Yeah. She you bring your daughter? Your oh, son too? No, nah, my no. sons. And then they're like, nah. Because they didn't, when my sons would visit me, they're like, I, hey, dad, I don't like the visits. They strip search you. They got guns on top. Like watching Oh, they strip you. search the people coming in? Well, Everybody. Of course they do, right? Yeah. yeah, sure. And they're like, I'm like, yeah, don't go through this shit no more. I just remember being on the freeway and my girlfriend was tripping because I was like, hey, is it okay if I roll the one? Because I'm used to asking someone to do. She's like, why the fuck are you asking me if you can roll the window down? And I was like scared. That's interesting. Yeah. How long did it take you to transition out of that sort of mentality? I don't know. Maybe a year. Yeah. And she was like, hey, we're going to go to your. My brother was watching my son from. I have two other sons. One of them lives with his mom. My other son lives with his brother. And we just went over there, and man, they were like, oh, dad. And it was crazy for a lot of crying, a lot of like, hey, I'm sorry. And then they took me to Disney Walk, and I almost fucking lost it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, and I'm ripped, dog. I was doing like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you've been shape your life. Yeah. Probably, right? <laughs> and I'm fucking over there, fucking Disney Walk. Sure enough. Motherfuckers are rude, stepping on my shoes. There's people on my, and then my sons just hug me. Dad, 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 dad. They can. Just, I was just like, wait, hey, hey, come here real quick. You fucking just stepped on my shit, homie. Who's like, and, and I remember the guy was like, I'm pushing my stroller. Sorry. 
<laughs> he was like, excuse this Bob me. Bob gets crazy here. Yeah. <laughs> and then my son seen it. And they're like, let's get the fuck out of here. I'm like, thank you. We went to a Mexican restaurant. I got drunk off one beer. Yeah, I bet your tolerance is nothing. Yeah, and hey, man. Let me ask you this. How long before you really were able to, like, let your shoulders down? You know, not just finally. <sighs> I don't know if I have yet. I've I've talked to guys in prison, and they say that it's something they never do. Nah. I, I've not, they, they, I've I've talked to guys that were like, if you see a dude that's always like this, he's probably served time. And I'm like, that's interesting. You just never really can. Yeah. Drop all the way. I mean, at the house. Yeah. But like. But still, there's always. Check this out. I haven't kicked it with the black dude in three years. And my homeboy, Stephen Fly, he was like, yo, player, I heard you're out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And he was just like, yo, you want a cigarette? I'm like, yeah, but I can't smoke after you. Like, I just, I've been taught these rules. And he was like, man, shut your ass up, dog. And I'm just like, hey, homie, I'm, I'm, I'm uncomfortable right now, please. He was just like. Oh shit! Like it was, hey, bro, it was weird, man. Like I didn't, yeah. When did you first do comedy after you were out? How long? Three months. Three months. What was that like? Well, I did it. How can I say this? Russell Peters is so dope. Yeah, he is. He's come and done done the show. He's great. yeah. You know, he found out. He was just like, yo, uh. You want to do Nokia theater? <laughs> oh, my God. Are you telling me you went from prison to doing theaters like that with Russell? <laughs> <laughs> you went from like a six by six cell to the Nokia theater? <laughs> Holy shit. That's a mind I fuck know. right there. I man. know. As three months out of prison, you're doing no, shows like that? I did a show with him three weeks, and then I, I got scared. Out of prison? Yeah. I did the Laugh Factory. He was we like, got- hey, come, come. And I was like, all right. And then- he was like, "Hey, we're doing Nokia Theater," and I was kind of like, w- w- I, "It wasn't no, a no- there, that wasn't around before I got locked up." No, it wasn't. And I was like, "The phone company has a <laughs> Nokia has a th- <laughs> <That's> a theater." <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, that was some shocking ass shit. I got scared, and I'm hey, I'm ripped. Like I, I have a model body, and Russell's like, "Hey, here's an outfit for the show." So guess who's at the show in the green room? Alyssa Milano. No. I got pictures, dog. Uh, The original Mystique. The girl. Rebecca Romaine Stamos. 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 Uh, Rosoli File. The Rosoli. The girls from Rosoli Files on T on T show. And yeah, dog. And like, I just remember like being hit on by successful people and Russell going, Hey, this fool was stabbing people two months ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then, like, after that, my girlfriend got real jealous. And she was just like, hey, I don't think you should be going out. You're on parole. Like, I, I broke parole because I, was, I wasn't allowed to leave. I could only be, like, I see. a 50-mile radius. And also, are you allowed to be in a place that has alcohol and live yeah, entertainment yeah, because, that's not violating parole? Yeah, no, parole, I wasn't a drug offender or nothing. Got it. Okay. They were just, like, they would search my house for weapons, and I couldn't be around another parolee. And, yeah, but fucking Russell, dog, that shit was dope. That, yeah, that's, what a what a 360. Yeah. I should say 180. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. God damn. And then Joey Diaz was finally like, hey, bro. I mean. I'm doing the Brea Improv. I only live 10 minutes from there. And he was like, you want to come do a quick 10 minutes? Fool makes me headline when I get there. <laughs> <laughs> and but he was just like, hey, bro. I, be, I, know, I know what you're going through, George. Break out of this shit. Break. Stop. He's like, your wife's going to try to make it do construction and all this shit. No, you're a fucking comedian. Remember like in Kill Bill where he's telling her, bitch, you're over here trying to get married to a record guy. You're a killer. Yeah. This is what you do. Joey sent me back out and I was like, you know what? Thanks, though. You're right. You're right. Because I, I sucked those first 15 minutes on stage. And then the com- the comic came out and he was like, fuck this shit. Go off the top now. Start fr-. And then I was like, it felt good again. You know, because yeah. when I did a Russell show, it was all my, I went over all my old jokes. It was, I didn't even test myself. Mm-hmm. And it was, they're all going to laugh. They thought I was Indian and shit. 
<laughs> they did. I was dressed in Russell's expensive ass. He got me like a Gucci outfit, and I was like, they're like, oh, shit, this full Indian too? Yeah. That's great, man. Yeah. What a story, dude. Thank you for uh, coming on here and sharing. I'm sure that was, wasn't was easy to talk about some of that stuff, man. Thank nah, you. Nah, man. I'm glad, though, bro. Like, I'm glad you're out. I'm you, glad you changed and Sagura, made a difference. Joey, Red Band, like you guys, I don't ever talk like this to my kids or nothing. I don't want them to know. Now they're going to know because they watch. But. Yeah. Thanks, man. Like, hey, dog, it's it's good, man. You know, there's a lot of talented people that are in prison, bro. I was locked up with the guy in the, remember that, you know that show Snow on Fox? Mm -mm. There's a show on Fox, uh, John Singleton directs it. It's okay. huge. The, that fool was in my prison dorm. One what of the, the main actors. Not really? Yeah, but. <laughs> yeah, right. He yeah. was in the riot that I was in, so we don't talk. <laughs> <laughs> Love your show, man, but fuck you. <laughs> uh, yeah. Dude, promote whatever you'd like one more time, please. George Perez, follow me on Twitter, Instagram, any network, George P. Comedy. I got a podcast called George Perez Stories. Every Tuesday night at 9.15, we drop an episode. I'm on tour with Fools Gone Wild and Funk Freaks and ladies only, only over the age of 44 send nudes. <laughs> That's great, dude. All right. Uh, as always, Ryan Sickler on all social media, ryansickler.com. We'll talk to you all next week.